We live in a world where relationships, especially marriages, are under an assault from misunderstanding, miscommunication, and misplaced priorities. A world where many couples grapple with these challenges and singles question the feasibility of marriages. But fear not, the Bible provides timeless principles that can help us to build, nurture, and sustain healthy marriage relationships. Thank you for joining us as pastors Ernest and Cynthia Jones take us on a transformative journey through this series called Relationship Status. We are rejoicing and being glad in it. Hey, thank you for coming in today. We have been dealing with a series that's called Relationship Status. We've been checking on our relationship and our marriages, trying to figure out is it good? Is it in trouble? Does it need some improvement? Is, there, is it a work in progress? Or as some people tell me, is it complicated? And so we've been, we've been talking about that. It's been a wonderful conversation, Cynthia. Yeah. We have been through several different areas as it relates to this. Um, we've already talked about five of them. Today is going to be the sixth and final one. But let me tell you, just in case you're joining us, let me tell you the, the, the five that we talked back so you can go back uh, on our YouTube channel and, and go back and get these, okay? But they we started out with communication. Then after communication, we went over to talking about quality time. After quality time, we started talking about building each other up. Then we moved on to intimacy. Our last session was a session about trust. And today, we're going to talk about forgiveness, okay? Forgiveness. And so this has all been building, and, and we've been enjoying the conversations that we've, we've had together. And in all of this, what we are simply telling you to do is a quote that, that my wife shared with me the other day, which says, choose love when love is the hardest. Because sometimes when these things that we're talking about, these are acts of love. These are things that say, I love this person. I love them, and I'm willing to do whatever I need to do to make the marriage work. I want that communication to work. I want us to have the quality time. I want us to be building up each other. I want us to have that intimacy, to trust each other. And, of course, we're talking about forgiveness today. And so we're choosing these things, even though sometimes they're hard things. Right, They're right. difficult things. Yeah. But we have to still choose them anyway. Yes. And so that really leads me to a question, and somebody might ask, what is forgiveness? Mm -hmm. So forgiveness is a command. We are called to forgive, even as the Lord has forgiven us. Right. And so we will be talking about some scriptures concerning um, what forgiveness is and what is our responsibility. And so, you know what? Forgiveness is not always what we think. In fact, when we are faced with deep hurt that shake us to the core and wonder if forgiveness is possible, we need to gain a clear understanding of forgiveness, and that way it will become less complicated. Right. And so the scripture, one of the scriptures that we, we talk about, because we, the thing that we know is that in everybody's marriage, there's going to probably be some things that are going to happen. There's probably going to be some things that are going to go on. And we need to forgive each other for those things, okay? They're, they, you know, whatever that thing is. And it might be a big thing, might be a little thing. But still, we need to ask for forgiveness. It might be the way we talk to each other sometimes. We need to ask for forgiveness. Sometimes, sometimes the way we treat each other, okay? We have to ask for forgiveness. And so we know that those things will come up, okay? And so the, the scripture that, that comes to mind is Colossians 3.13. In Colossians 3.13, the King James Version says, for, for bearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you so also do ye and so a little later on we're, gonna, we're actually going to talk about you know uh you know why we forgive but as you can see here that the the one of the, what paul says to the church of Colossus is that we have to forgive one another and this is not just a scripture a lot of times we we take scripture that and i think we we it only belongs outside of our house no, scripture is meant to be lived out inside of the house, inside of our relationships. And so it's important that we um, enact the acts of forgiveness, especially to our family and especially to our, our loved ones and our spouses, that we understand that we cannot allow something to, to stay between us 
a long time, okay? It reminds you of the scripture that says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, okay? Make sure that we are dealing with those things that may come between us. So we have several things that let us know what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Because if we wait to feel like forgiving someone after a deep hurt, those feelings may never come. Right. Let's be honest. So our feelings are unreliable. And so it's very important that we begin to, you know, shift our feelings and then that we would make a decision to forgive. So forgiveness does not mean the same as trust. The Bible clearly says, even as we just heard, Colossians 3 and 13, forgiveness is offered unconditionally regardless of the offender's response. Wow. This means we forgive with or without an apology or evidence of change. Yeah, and that becomes a hard thing when you think yeah. about forgiveness is, you know, we, we want the, the, the speech, we want the, you know, the, you know, why this, why that, every, everything put in place in order for us to feel better. But the first thing you said is forgiveness is not a feeling. Right. So, so I guess God, God, leave that part alone. And then, then, you know, you may not even get the, the things that you think you ought to get, but still it is your responsibility to offer up that forgiveness. Okay, what else you got? All right. So forgiveness does not necessarily mean reconciling. All right. And so in the end, the main goal is, is reconciliation, right. all right? But we understand that sometimes that do not happen. And so it's very important that you understand that reconciliation is the goal. Right. We're working towards reconciliation. My actions, my decisions, my thoughts, my behaviors, all that is working towards Reconciliation. And sometimes you don't get to reconciliation without first having that forgiveness. You got to right. forgive first, and that puts you on that path in order for um, reconciliation to happen. Okay. And so forgiveness does not heal everything in a single moment. Mm. So healing is a journey, and it's best done with our Heavenly Father. Uh, my biggest thing is you can't do it without God. Right. You need your father, right. Jesus Christ, to help you. Yeah. And so forgiveness is a necessary ingredient in the healing process. So while we make the choice to forgive, it doesn't necessarily mean we're instantly going to feel better. So forgiveness does not heal everything in a single moment. And so as a married couple, you needing to understand that, walk alongside each other, bear with one another, right. endure with one another, continue to speak life over your relationship, okay? Yeah. All right? And so also forgiving is not forgetting. Right. And so it's very important that the couples know that. I forgive you even though I will never forget it. All right? Uh, forgiveness is not excusing the offense, right. mm -hmm. nor is forgiveness condoning the offense. So this is not, you know, I forgive and then I'm, I'm waving a flag like it's, it's okay. No, it's not okay. But I am willing to forgive you. Um, what you, you've done is wrong. What you have done has, um, you know, how it has affected us. And so, again, we're not condoning the offense. And so a lot of times people want to hold on to unforgiveness because, well, if I forgive them, they, they can just do what they want to do or believe right. it was okay. Right. No, it is not okay. And so we have, to, um, we have to remember that. So it does not excuse or condones a person's offense. And so there are consequences as a result so we also have to understand that as well and so when you talk about that fact of uh, it's not condoning the offense and sometimes people think that uh, you know if i forgive them that means they're getting whatever um i i, I read something the other day that says that for, you know people look at forgiveness as being weakness mm -hmm. you know uh you, you're weak because you're forgiving uh someone but it's it's not weakness okay 
um, it is it is saying that now it's not saying I'm condoning or excusing their behavior. It's just saying that you know what I want the relationship to work. I want to I want to go after what I believe to be important, and it begins with me forgiving that particular person. Right. And then the last one I have is forgiving is not tolerating, okay? It is not tolerating the behavior that is hurtful, all right? And so we're supposed to uh, speak the truth in love. Mm -hmm. And so again... That's in the Bible, isn't it? That is in the Bible. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so it's important that we recognize forgiving is not tolerating. Right. And so as we talk about, the, therefore, the big picture, you know, why we forgive, okay, and... and uh, some of those, and some of those, you read some scriptures that are, that are very important because there's a biblical aspect to forgiving. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's a bi biblical aspect to forgiving, and therefore we we forgive based upon the biblical aspect that that's a requirement, that's a responsibility that we forgive. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, we don't have a we, we don't have a right to harbor unforgiveness. We we just can't do that because the first scripture we said that that we read that uh, what was Colossians scripture? Yes. It talks about that we ought to forgive even as Christ forgave us. And so therefore, we have the model, okay? The model is Christ. Christ forgave us, and therefore, we must forgive each other. So that becomes very important that we do that. All right. So, you know, one of the, the secret things about forgiveness is prayer. Mm. And so, you know, if you're saying, well, okay, I don't know how am I going to do this. Well, I'm going to tell you. You're going to go into prayer right. because prayer is that, if you will, that secret power that will help break down those walls that have been built up because of unforgiveness. Right. And so prayer will chip away at those walls brick by brick, layer by layer, until you can begin to have a heart that is open towards God and, and be able to receive that heart of forgiveness and that can be hard to do very it much really can so. be hard to do you know yeah. because because a lot of times we let's just be truthful is that we like to harbor harbor our hurts and our disappointments and our what we annoyed by and what the betrayal was and all this other kind of stuff we like to harbor those particular things but as you said there prayer is that thing that chips away at our heart and, and causes us to be able to forgive and to do what we need to do in order to to bring that um, marriage back to with it because again thinking about again the big picture uh, really talking about these spiritual things but also remembering that they're practical things of why we forgive as well because um it's it's not about my hurt it is about my marriage that's what i that's what i want i want to reconcile my marriage and so i don't want to hold on to all this that can cause bitterness cause division no peace in the home and all that kind of stuff I want to continue to nurse those things because that's what we do a lot. A lot of people just want to nurse what's going on. But the bigger picture is, hey, you're, you're, you're not having peace in your home. You're not having any of those areas of intimacy that we talked about. None of those are happening. None of those are going on. All because we have not started the process by forgiving. So we got to keep that in mind that there's a bigger picture than just harboring and holding on to the moment of what happened to us in the past. So so what, what are some other things that, that talk about how to forgive? Yeah. Okay. So when we are, um, again, when we are in our secret place and we're uh, praying about it, um, it's important to uh, just surround yourself uh, with the word of the Lord because, again, we are Christians. Um, and so we believe the Bible. And so we're going to have to take on the word of the Lord and begin to dive into the word of the Lord. And that way, again, we can chip away our, the, the unforgiveness that is in our heart. So that is very important. And making sure that you have a, a, a great support system. Yeah. Just having someone to talk to, having someone, that most importantly, to pray with you, to lift you up in this process. And we have to be real and honest with ourselves. And if that means, you know, hey, I got to go see a, a therapist, somebody I can talk to to help me with this because I want to um, live a life of forgiveness and I want to walk in that freedom because I don't want to be chained up. And that's what, you know, that's what unforgiveness will do to you. Mm -hmm. It will chain you up. It will lock you up. And so, and it will affect every area of your life. And so it's very important that you, you do this for you. 
And so, you know, marriage or no marriage, you do this for you because you've got to make sure that you're living a life of forgiveness and God will be pleased. And so, again, we talked about reconciliation. That is very, very vital, doing what's necessary in your relationship. And so I just want to encourage you, begin to just seek the Lord in prayer. And, and when we think about just some final thoughts about this, this um, uh, what we're talking about here is that one of the things that we've got to do when we are attempting to forgive is that we got to challenge any of those self-defeating thoughts that we have where it's going to cause us to hold on to our hurt feelings and all that kind of stuff. Don't, don't do everything you can to hold on to your hurt feelings, okay? Challenge that, okay? Another thing that I, that I, I feel like we need to do is distract ourselves from flashbacks. Flashbacks are really harmful, because we start flashback, do, having a flashback to the betrayal, and that will trigger negative thoughts. And when those negative thoughts are triggered, man, we are right back at, you know, uh, uh, being in a place of unforgiveness, okay? And then we have to accept in the unforgiveness, this is one thing that, that you kind of mentioned and talked about, is that you may never know the reason for the hurtful behavior. You may never know it. Forgiveness, however, does not require any of that, okay? You may have to just accept that. You have to refrain from seeking retribution. It's not tit for tat. It's not, oh, the only way I can forgive, I got to do something for the, to them. No, you, you can't be about that. And then also, be patient with yourself, okay? Forgiveness takes time. If you're the one that has to do the forgiving, or you're the one that's looking for the forgiveness, know that patience is important during this particular time. Don't hurry the process, because the process is going to be important to the healing. And you want the wounds to heal in a proper way. So please, please understand that forgiveness is very important in order for us to continue to build our relationship and have it to be what God would have it to be. So, yeah. So just remember, uh, forgiveness is a choice. I make a decision to forgive. And the only way you can do that and walk through the forgiveness process uh, healing process, um, ask Christ to come into your life. Ask Christ for help as you're learning to forgive. So we are praying. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, we pray for those that may be in a season of their lives where forgiveness needs to occur. But Lord, they may feel like it's difficult. It may feel like it's something uh, that they're having a hard time doing. Father, I pray that right now that they would have an encounter with you through prayer that will chip away at their hearts and cause them to, to offer this very act of forgiveness. And this act of forgiveness will be the very thing that will lead to the reconciliation of their relationship. Father, I thank you for your power working in the couples. I thank you, Lord God, that they're going to get back to a place where they were in their relationship with you and be able to move forward and have the life that you have called them to have together, the abundant life. And I thank you for now healing taking place, healing in the mind, healing in relationship, healing in all aspects of that marriage. And as you do it, Lord God, we give you honor, we give you praise, and we give you glory now in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, God bless you. Thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, we've done six sessions. If this is the only one you've seen or you've seen two or three, go back and pick them up. Make sure you watch all six sessions. Make sure you like. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the notification button. But we appreciate you allowing us to come into your home, come into your car, come into wherever you've been watching this app to share um, these practical and biblical um, principles concerning uh, marriage and what we believe will help you to have a happy marriage. But don't forget, you got to put in the work. Happy ever after don't happen unless we make it happen. God bless you. We'll see you.